pastors, seminarians, and saints who came to the Shincheonji online seminar testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. It is truly nice to meet you. I am Kim Kyu-sang, who is the host for today. Last time, you listened to the true meanings of the figurative bridegroom, bride, widow, and orphan through an instructor from Bartholomew tribe. The reason why Shincheonji Church of Jesus can testify to the meaning and the true reality of the parables is that first, all the parables have been opened as the promised time has come. And there is the promised pastor who has seen and heard all the secrets of heaven that have been hidden next to Jesus. Today, I hope that you will have the time to gain valuable enlightenment by confirming the meaning of the parables and the reality of the word, which are the keys to the secret of heaven. Then first of all, let us pray with the same heart. Most Holy Father God, who is full of love and whom we are thankful to, we sincerely thank you for the grace that you have led us to this day with life and the Word. In particular, please guide your precious children of faith who came to the Shincheonji online seminar testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, this time to be filled with the Word and grace. 2,000 years ago, Jesus established the new covenant through His blood, and today is the time when this precious new covenant is fulfilled. In this precious time, for the believers in the global village who hope for the kingdom of heaven, Jesus sent his advocate, the chairman of Shincheonji, and made him testify to everything he has seen and heard. Also, you had the chairman as well as the 12 tribe leaders to testify to all of the prophecy and fulfillment on Revelation, God's new covenant, so that MOUs could be signed with the pastors of each country, and now the center instructors who have learned from the promised pastor and the 12 tribe leaders are clearly testifying to the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. So please, help every precious believer who has hope in heaven so that they can perceive the word that is given. Especially, we pray that you will lead everything today at this time, so that the one who preaches the word as well as those who receive it will understand the word of God and become one through grace. We believe you govern this seminar from the beginning until the end, so that it will lead to an amazing improvement in faith for those who listen. We prayed in the name of Jesus, who atoned of our sins. Amen. Now is the time to testify to the parables and their true meanings. Today, the words of Lesson 20, the figurative war between Jerusalem and Babylon, will be testified. When you listen to the word, I hope that you can open your heart wide and have a time to gain valuable understanding and enlightenment. We will have Instructor Kim Simon of Matthew Tribe who will deliver the message today. Pastors, seminarians, and saints all over the world who wish for heaven, hello. It is nice to meet you. I am Kim Simon, a center instructor who learned the word of revelation from the tribe leader of the Matthew Tribe amongst the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Our tribe leader was taught by the chairman Lee Man-hee of Shincheonji. Thank you very much for attending the Shincheonji online seminar today, the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. The Bible is a map to heaven on which the road to heaven is recorded. We are different in races, nationalities, and even denominations, but we are all believers who hope for heaven through the same Word of God. So I hope this time we break down the walls of denominations and understand the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings so that it will be a precious time to reach our hope.
Then let's begin sharing the word for today. The title is Introductory Lesson 20, The Figurative War Between Jerusalem and Babylon. How did you understand about the wars recorded in the Bible? The wars in the Bible are not only physical wars that we are well aware of, but also spiritual wars which borrows the characteristics from physical wars. I'm sure you pastors know well about this. However, I would appreciate it if you could listen to what I'm explaining today and take it to heart. In the Bible, we see that there are wars between physical Jerusalem and Babylon in history, and there are also wars between spiritual Jerusalem and Babylon, which is compared to the physical wars. First, let me tell you the answer to the parables that you will listen to today. Since we will talk about the figurative war between Jerusalem and Babylon, we will take a look at these three main topics. The answer to the parable of Jerusalem is a church of the chosen people belonging to God. The answer to the parable of Babylon is a church of the Gentile demons belonging to Satan. The answer to the figurative war between these two churches or denominations will be a spiritual warfare of doctrines. Now let's find out why the answers to the parables are like this by searching the Bible together with me. Let me explain the answers to the parables. First, the figurative Jerusalem is a church of the chosen people belonging to God. Let's read the verses with this parable in Luke chapter 21, verses 20 to 21. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let those in the city get out, and let those in the country not enter the city. You have read well. The words of Luke chapter 21 is among the prophecy of the four Gospels recorded about the second coming of the Lord. It says, At the second coming of the Lord, when one sees Jerusalem is surrounded by armies, they will know that its destruction is near and must flee to the mountains. There is a time when these words of prophecy must be fulfilled and it appears. Then what is the reason that this event was let known in advance? It was revealed in advance so that when this word is fulfilled, everyone can flee or escape to the mountains. Then, is this word only applicable to those who are living in the physical land of Jerusalem? No, it is not. The figurative Jerusalem in the reference verses refers to a spiritual Jerusalem. So we who are living in the time of the second coming must know clearly where the spiritual Jerusalem that is surrounded is, as well as where the mountain we must flee to is. The first thing we need to understand is that the names of countries, places, and people appearing in the books of prophecy were recorded in parables, which were compared to their historical background. To see an example of this, if you look at the words of Revelation, which is a representative book of prophecy in the New Testament, in Revelation chapter 11 verse 8, it records about a place called the Great City where the two witnesses of Jesus were killed in the last days. It says that the place is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt and Golgotha where Jesus was crucified. Sodom, Egypt, and Golgotha are geographically distant locations from one another. How could this one place, the Great City then, be called Sodom, Egypt, and Golgotha at the same time. It means, from a spiritual point of view, that the place is like Sodom, which was corrupt, and like Egypt, where Moses and Aaron fought against Pharaoh to bring out God's people. And it is also like the place where Jesus had died on the cross innocently. These historical locations were taken spiritually. 
Therefore, it is important to understand that the names of countries and places appearing in the books of prophecy have a spiritual meaning by comparing their historical backgrounds. And we need to perceive the reality of the parables where the prophecies of the New Testament are fulfilled. In regards to Jerusalem as well, there is a physical Jerusalem and a spiritual Jerusalem that is figuratively represented through that history. The physical Jerusalem was a physical kingdom and city of the chosen people that God was with on the earth in the history of the Old Testament. It means that Jerusalem was a kingdom of the people chosen by God. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 17, it says, At that time they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. This does not simply refer to the name of a place, but by taking the name of the physical place, it means that wherever God is, that is Jerusalem. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world is figuratively called as the holy city Jerusalem according to Revelation chapter 21 verse 10. In the Old Testament era, the physical Jerusalem whom God was with had betrayed God. They worshipped Gentile gods and they rebelled against God, so God had departed from them. At this time, God prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14 that He will gather one from a town and two from a clan and bring them to Zion so that they can be led with knowledge and understanding. God, who had already departed from the physical Jerusalem, would gather His chosen people and come down to that place at the appointed time. Therefore, it means that the place where God is with at that time is called as Jerusalem. Also in Zechariah chapter 8 verse 3, it is said that the place where God returns to is Zion and Jerusalem. And since the word of truth comes out of Jerusalem, as God is with them, it is said that Jerusalem will become the city of truth. And so the spiritual Jerusalem is a place where God is with, the place where the word of truth comes out from. So the figurative Jerusalem is not simply the physical name of a location, but a church or denomination of the chosen people belonging to God, which is likened to the physical location. Next, I will explain the answer to the parable of Babylon. The figurative Babylon, as opposed to Jerusalem, refers to the church or denomination of Gentile demons that belong to Satan. Let's read Revelation chapter 17 verse 5, which speaks about the figurative Babylon. This title was written on her forehead. Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. In Revelation chapter 17, there is a woman, a great prostitute, sitting on the beast with seven heads and ten horns. And the name Babylon is written on her forehead, and it says that it is a mystery. What a strange beast, right? However, I believe you will already, already understand through this seminar that the beast is not an actual bizarre beast that appears, but they are the opposers belonging to the devil, the organization of the destroyers. Then why is the word Babylon written on the prostitute's forehead? It means that they are the denomination of Gentile demons, which is the organization of the destroyers that Satan is with. Let's take a look at the historical background of why this is compared to Babylon. The kingdom of Babylon is a representative kingdom of the Gentiles that destroyed Jerusalem, which was the kingdom of the chosen people in the history of the Old Testament. The nation of Israel, in which God was with, just like in the words of 1 Kings chapter 11, The tribe of Judah was left among the 12 tribes and the remaining 11 tribes went to the Gentiles due to Solomon's sin. Because Solomon had betrayed God and worshipped Gentile gods, the nation was divided into the south and the north. The south as south Judah with its capital Jerusalem with the tribe of Judah and north Israel where the rest of the tribes were gathered in the northern part. Thereafter, north Israel was destroyed by the Gentile nation Assyria, leaving only the tribe of Judah. 
But even the remaining Judah and Jerusalem were eventually swallowed up by the Gentiles. It is well explained in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, so if you read it, you'll be able to understand this well. Because God's chosen people became corrupted and betrayed God, as it says in 1 Kings chapter 11, Jerusalem in history was destroyed by the Gentile nation Babylon in a terrible and horrific way. On the other hand, in Isaiah chapter 1, it is a vision about Judah and Jerusalem. And according to this vision, which is a prophecy of the Old Testament, Jesus came from the north Israel to south Judah and preached his words at the first coming as seen in John chapter 8. Babylon also appears in the book of Revelation, the prophecy at the time of the second coming. Let's read Revelation chapter 18 verse 2. With a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a home for demons and a haunt for every evil spirit, a haunt for every unclean and detestable bird. The book of Revelation is a prophecy at the time of the second coming of the Lord. It wouldn't be the old Babylon, which has already gone and disappeared. This wouldn't reappear, right? It is said that Babylon is a home for demons that had captured God's chosen people and all nations at the fulfillment of the final revelation, just as it has destroyed the people of God, Jerusalem, in history. Therefore, the figurative Babylon inside the Bible is a church or denomination of the Gentile demons belonging to Satan, which is compared to the physical place in the history. To summarize, first, in the spiritual world, there are the worlds of God and of Satan, these two kingdoms. As the Spirit uses the flesh to work on this earth, there is a division between the chosen people whom God is with and the Gentiles that Satan is with on this earth. The kingdom and people of God's chosen people whom God is together with is called as Jerusalem, Israel, Judea, and Zion. And the kingdom of the Gentile demons belonging to Satan is likened as Babylon, Egypt, and Assyria. Next, I will explain the war between these two kingdoms. A war is a battle between two countries, and the figurative war in the Bible refers to a spiritual battle of doctrines. Let's read Matthew chapter 24, verses 6 to 8. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. The Gospel of Matthew is the content recorded by Matthew, one of Jesus' twelve disciples, of what he had seen and heard from Jesus, approximately 2,000 years ago. Especially the words of Matthew chapter 24 is a prophecy that Jesus had given about the signs of the second coming and of the end of the age in response to the questions asked by Jesus' disciples in verse 3 about the signs of the second coming of the Lord and the end of the world, which is the end of the age. In verse 7, which you had read, Jesus prophesied that as a sign of the second coming of the Lord that there will be wars waged between nations and between kingdoms. Now what kind of nations would these two nations be? These are not the physical countries in the world. We can see this through the book of Revelation, which also prophesied about the time of the Lord's second coming just as Matthew 24 did. The war in Matthew chapter 24 takes place in the same location as the war in Revelation chapter 13. In Revelation chapter 13, there is a war between the chosen people who belong to God and of Babylon, which is the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Therefore, this war is a war between Jerusalem, the church of God's chosen people, and Babylon, the church of the Gentile demons. If we say that this war is a physical war, here is something we need to think about. Does war only exist at the time of the Lord's second coming? 
Before the time of the second coming, is it a world of peace without any wars at all? As we know very well, wars and conflicts have never stopped in this world since the history of mankind began. So if this war, which is a sign of the second coming of the Lord, is interpreted as a physical war, when will the standard of the last days be? That is why the physical wars cannot be considered as a sign of the Lord's second coming. What do you think about this, everyone? I will testify to the answer of the figurative war based on the Bible. First, a war is a fight or a battle between two countries. Because the two countries have different affiliations as well as different ideologies and ideas, they fight for their own purpose. That is a war. The result is either you win or you lose. So they're divided into the winners and the losers. Those who win in the war will get everything, and those who are defeated will lose everything. In the history of the Old Testament, there was a physical war between the physical Jerusalem and Babylon. This physical war was a real, actual war fought with physical weapons such as real bows, swords, and spears. Because Jerusalem was defeated in that battle, they were captured by Babylon and served as slaves for 70 years. The physical Jerusalem and Babylon fought a physical war in this manner, but the spiritual Jerusalem and Babylon will be in a spiritual war, in a fierce battle of doctrines. Regarding the spiritual war, let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 to 12 and verse 17. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. As you have read, this war is not about flesh and blood, and the subject to be fought against is against the spiritual forces of evil. So you can clearly see that it's a spiritual war against Satan, the devil. In terms of the weapons to fight with in order to win, in verse 17, it says to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the weapon of the spiritual war is not the weapons of this world, but it is the Word of God and I believe you will understand this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3-6, to 6, it is said that the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world, and it is said that we demolish arguments and make them obedient to Christ. Thus, the weapon to fight with is God's word of truth. There are two kingdoms in the spiritual realm, and on this earth as well, there is a division between the church of God's chosen people and the church of Satan and the devil's Gentiles. Being figuratively represented using the historical background, these two sides are compared to Jerusalem and Babylon. These are the two nations that are at war. How do they fight? The true pastor of God uses the truth. And the pastor of Satan, the false pastor, uses falsehood to fight. This is a spiritual war of doctrines. So I hope that all of you who hear these words will use the sword of the Holy Spirit, the word of God's truth as the weapon, and fight and win in the war against Satan together. In Luke chapter 21, verses 20 to 21, as we read earlier, didn't it say, when you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies at the second coming of the Lord to flee to the mountains. Also in Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 to 16, it said that those who read the book of Daniel will understand and that when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation to flee to the mountains. This means that Jerusalem will be taken captive by Babylon, the destroyers. 
In Daniel chapter 12, it was told to close up the words until the time of the end, because Jerusalem and Babylon will fight against each other in the last days. Then let's take a look at the reality of this war at the second coming. At the fulfillment of the book of Revelation, at the second coming of the Lord, there are two battles in the war between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. I will tell you about the first battle of the spiritual war in the second coming. As seen through the words of Revelation chapter 1 verse 20, when the words of Revelation are fulfilled, There will be seven stars, seven messengers preparing the way, and the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands where they work, just like John the Baptist had done at the time of the first coming. The tabernacle of the seven lampstands where the seven stars are. Where are stars? They're in the sky. And so in Revelation chapter 13 verse 6, this place is called as a tabernacle. It is called heaven. And so the tabernacle of heaven. So the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands where the seven messengers are at the time of the fulfillment of revelation. It is this tabernacle of heaven which is a spiritual kingdom of the chosen people, Jerusalem. And I believe that you all understand that it's not the actual location of Jerusalem in the Middle East. However, the seven messengers of the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that prepare the way for the Lord forsake their first love with Jesus. In Revelation chapters 2 to 3 it says, and they betray the covenant that they had made with God. And this tabernacle of heaven gets destroyed by the beast of Babylon in Revelation due to their betrayal. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 13 verses 6 to 7. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God, and to slander his name and his dwelling place, and those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them, and he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. If we look at the words of Revelation chapter 13, we see a beast with seven heads and ten horns coming out of the sea. This is the same beast that you saw earlier, right? We can see that this beast destroys the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that betrayed. Likewise, in the first battle at the time of Revelation, the tabernacle of the chosen people where the seven messengers were is defeated, and the Babylonian beast, the destroyer, is victorious. At this time, the tabernacle of the chosen people who betrayed is a reality of the destroyed Jerusalem prophesied about in Luke chapter 21. And this beast of Babylon is a reality of the Gentile army that captures them. And that is why, in the parable of Revelation chapter 17 verse 5, the name of the prostitute who sat on the beast with seven heads and ten horns had this name Babylon written on her forehead, right? This is because the prostitute and the beast are the organization of the destroyers that destroy Jerusalem, the tabernacle of God's chosen people at the time of the Lord's second coming. Also in Revelation chapter 18, it is said that all nations have fallen by Babylon's wine of adultery. The spiritual Jerusalem where God is with was destroyed by the spiritual Babylon, the kingdom of Satan, due to the people's betrayal, and all nations are taken captive by Babylon and falls into Satan's control. But it shouldn't end like this, right? Just as Jesus fought and overcame with the word of truth at the first coming and restored the new Jerusalem, even at the time of Revelation's fulfillment, there has to be the work of fighting and overcoming Babylon the destroyers, and a new Jerusalem that God is with must be created. So the second battle within the spiritual war at the second coming can be seen in Revelation chapter 12. The one who fought against and overcame the beast of Babylon, the destroyers, and the brothers appear. As they win the war against Babylon, the kingdom of demons that is with the dragon, 
they restore the kingdom of God and create an eternal kingdom. And this is the recreated Jerusalem. According to Revelation chapter 12, they fought to the point of death with the blood of the Lamb, the words of Jesus, and the words of their testimony and overcame. These are true believers who gave their lives for the work of God and the kingdom of God is established through these overcomers. This is the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in Revelation chapter 15. I believe that this place will be God's new kingdom where God will be with when the book of Revelation is fulfilled and where all nations will come to worship. And there is a war in which the overcomers of Revelation chapter 12 judge the betrayers and the destroyers. The overcomers in Revelation chapter 12 become the bowls of God's wrath in Revelation chapter 15. And in Revelation chapter 16, they poured the bowls on Babylon and fought and overcame the two entities, the betrayers and the destroyers. Then at the fulfillment of the book of Revelation, we must find the overcomer promised in this Bible and find the newly created and restored Jerusalem through him. If we look at the reality of war at the second coming, the tabernacle of the seven stars and the seven golden lampstands that prepare the way, chosen by God, appear at the second coming. This is the spiritual Jerusalem. However, due to their betrayal, God leaves, and the beast of Babylon, the destroyer, enters here. In this way, in the first battle, Jerusalem, the previous era that betrays, is defeated and Babylon is victorious. And then, the messenger chosen by Jesus, who sees and hears everything at the scene of these events, fights to the point of death against the group of the destroyers, overcomes them with the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. This is a second battle in the war at the second coming. And in the second battle, the organization of Babylon, the destroyers, is defeated, and Jesus' messenger, who is together with God and Jesus, is victorious. Then, where do I belong? Do I belong to Jerusalem, this former era that betrays, or to Satan's kingdom, Babylon, and all nations that have fallen? Or, do I belong to the new Jerusalem, the new kingdom of God, where God is with. We must think about this. Where must you run to when Jerusalem is surrounded and destroyed by Babylon? You have to run to the mountains, right? That is, Mount Zion, created through the overcomer, the new Jerusalem, a place of salvation like Noah's ark that one must get on to be saved just as it was in the time of Noah. Then if you are a believer at the second coming, where should you go when you know about the war and about these three organizations? That's right. I believe that we need to find this overcomer and the 12 tribes on Mount Zion. This is the place of salvation promised in the New Testament the mountain to flee to, that is Mount Zion in Revelation chapter 14, the 12 tribes of God's new kingdom in Revelation chapter 7, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in Revelation chapter 15. Also, this is the new heaven and new earth where the holy city, New Jerusalem, of the spiritual realm comes down to. The 12 tribes of Shincheonji are the 12 tribes on Mount Zion, where God is with here on this earth, the only place created according to the Bible in the world. It is God's kingdom, Jerusalem. And Jesus, who went to prepare this place in John chapter 14, will come here. And the holy city, New Jerusalem, from the spiritual realm, will come to the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, Mount Zion, here on this earth. What is done in heaven is done on earth in this way, and the kingdom comes. 
I hope that we all receive the blessings that are promised here in Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, where it says that there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. And I hope that we can become the family that obtains heaven and eternal life by holding on to these words of hope within our hearts and through loving one another. Let me give you the conclusion of the figurative war between Jerusalem and Babylon that we had gone over today. The figurative Jerusalem is a church of God's chosen people, and the figurative Babylon is a church of the Gentile demons. Their spiritual war is a war of doctrines. At the time of the second coming of the Lord, there are the first and second battles of the spiritual war. When there is a spiritual war in the book of Revelation, we must find the promised overcomer who has won the war against the group of Satan. And we must win in this war against Satan together so that we can become the kingdom of God's chosen people. Dear pastors, seminarians, and saints, did you hear today's message well? I believe that it was a time to perceive God's precious secrets of heaven. The reason we clearly testify to these parables, as Jesus had promised, is because the reality of the parables that have been revealed is just as we have heard today. I pray that you will receive the testimony on the parables and their true meanings to receive the blessings of heaven together. In the next lesson, another lecturer from the 12 tribes of Shinjanji will testify very clearly about the figurative heaven and earth and the sun, moon, and stars. I hope that you will attend the next session as well and receive the secrets of heaven that God has opened up. We are currently in the midst of the last fierce battle. Let's become one, belonging to God in the truth, and win in this war against Satan. We are one in God and in Jesus. We are one. Let us pray. Father God, to whom we are grateful, we give you gratitude for opening the secrets of heaven clearly and allowing us to understand them. You have granted the secrets of the kingdom of heaven to many pastors, seminarians, and saints who came out to listen to these words. Please help them to engrave the word in their hearts so that they can all receive the blessings of heaven. Even in difficult and tough situations, they are coming forward by relying on the word. So please give them the heart to understand and please also allow all of us to receive the blessings that you are giving to us. All these things we pray in the name of our loving Jesus. Amen. Thank you to everyone who have listened. It is said that the sun in the sky will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky. And it is said that after that, Jesus will come and gather his elect from the four winds. When the earth has disappeared and there is no more land, then where would his elect be? I want all of you to become the children of heaven who enter the new heaven and new earth, not the first heaven and the first earth that will end after being judged. Yes, as you saw in the video, next time, the seminar will be about the figurative heaven and earth and sun, moon, and stars. The time will be the same as today, at 10 a.m. I hope that you attend next time, and that you and I will all become qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven that we hope for. The Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings, is being broadcasted simultaneously in 24 languages around the world through the official YouTube channel of the Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Also, through the seminar on Revelation, 
testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's new covenant, which was held until last December. Many pastors and denominations around the world showed great interest in the word and are signing MOUs and becoming one with Shincheonji Church of Jesus. In addition to the message you've heard today, if you have any questions or inquiries about the Shincheonji Church of Jesus and its doctrines, please contact the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. We will be happy to guide you in detail. Now, we will conclude all the program of the Shincheonji Online Seminar by giving the prayer the Lord has taught us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone, for being with us.